Routes law is the idea that the vapor pressure of a solution, that is, the pressure exerted by the vapor of solvent molecules above a solution in a closed container, is proportional to the mole fraction of the solvent in that solution and the vapor pressure of the pure solvent itself. If we're able to measure the vapor pressure over a solution, and we know or are able to measure the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, then we can determine the mole fraction of solvent in a solution with some unknown properties, and that's the idea in this problem here. Specifically, we can just rearrange this equation, dividing both sides by the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, to come to the conclusion that the mole fraction of the solvent within an ideal solution is equal to the ratio of the vapor pressure of the solution to the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. And because vapor pressure lowering occurs when we dissolve a solute in a solvent, the pressure of the solution, the vapor pressure of the solution, will always be lower than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, so X solvent will always be less than 1, as it must be, since it's a mole fraction. So let's see how we can apply this equation in the context of this problem. The problem tells us that 8.05 grams of an unknown compound, which the problem just calls X, was dissolved in 100 grams of benzene, C6H6. The vapor pressure of benzene decreased from 100 torr to 94.8 torr at the temperature, which is going to end up being irrelevant anyway. What's the mole fraction of the solute, and what is the molar mass of X? So there are two questions built into this problem, and they kind of build on each other, because we're going to need to determine the mole fraction of the solute in order to determine the molar mass of X, ultimately. Now, if we look at the Routes Law equation in red, we see that the given vapor pressures for the pure solvent and the solution specifically 100 torr for the pure solvent and 94.8 torr for the solution, allow us to set up this ratio. Specifically, the vapor pressure of the solution, 94.8 torr goes in the numerator, and the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, 100 torr, goes in the denominator. And this gives us a mole fraction of the solvent of 0 0.948. Now, from here, we want to get to the mole fraction of the solute. And the thing to realize here is that the solution contains two components, solute and solvent. And that's it. That's all it contains. So that means that any moles that are not the solvent must be the solute. Conceptually, then, the mole fraction of the solute is equal to 1 the total number of moles, if you like, minus the mole fraction of the solvent. In this case, that's 1 minus 0 0.948, which is 0 0.052. This is the mole fraction of the solute, and we have answered the first question. Let's now move on to the second question, the molar mass of x. Ultimately, this problem now boils down to stoichiometry with a little bit of somewhat complicated algebra. We can write the mole fraction of the solute as the number of moles of solute divided by the total number of moles, which for a two-component solution is just the moles of solvent plus the moles of solute. And we can see that since our goal is to determine the molar mass of x, and molar mass is a ratio of mass, specifically that mass, to the number of moles of solute, this is our key unknown. The moles of solute are really our key unknown in this problem. In fact, the moles of solvent, we actually know. How do we know? Well, we know that 100 grams of benzene were used to make the solution, and we know the molar mass of benzene. It's C6H6, meaning that the molar mass is 78 grams per mole. This means we have 1.28 moles of the solvent in solution. From here I'm going to switch to red because it's all math. The mole fraction of the solute, which was the 0.052 we found earlier from the vapor pressure lowering effect, 
is equal to our unknown number of moles, that's the moles of solute, I'm just going to abbreviate that as n and ditch the solute subscript since there's only one number of moles left, divided by the number of moles of solvent, 1.28, plus that number of moles of solute. If you multiply both sides by 1.28 plus n and do the algebra to isolate n, you will find that n comes out to 0 0.0702 moles. And I would encourage you just to make sure that this is actually correct to plug this back in for the value of n here in the numerator and here in the denominator to make sure that the ratio does indeed come out to 0 0.052, the mole fraction of solute that we found before. From here, we're very nearly done. We have the number of moles of solute in the solution, and we have the mass of solute used up here. So the molar mass, or the molecular weight, then, is simply the ratio of, of these two, the mass of the solute divided by the moles of the solute, which we just found. Dividing the given 8.05 grams divided by the 0.0702 moles of solute gives us a molar mass of 115 grams per mole. Let's briefly review what we did to get to this point. The key first step was to use the given vapor pressures for the pure solvent and the solution to set up a ratio that was equal to the mole fraction of the solvent, namely the ratio of the solution vapor pressure to the pure solvent vapor pressure is equal to that mole fraction. From there, using the idea that the mole fraction of solute is 1 minus the mole fraction of solvent, we could go to the mole fraction of solute, set that up using the definition of mole fraction to contain one unknown variable, specifically the moles of solute, plug in the moles of solvent calculated from the setup of the problem, solve for the moles of solute and then use the ratio of the mass of solute given to the moles of solute to give us the 115 grams per mole, the molar mass of the solute. 